Okay, here we go. I'm trying kind of a different setup this time. I've got the game a little bit smaller and me a little bit bigger and if this works then I've got a uh, chat window actually in the uh, the stream itself so we'll see if that works. I don't think anybody's actually in the chat yet. I may be doing this by myself but that's okay. So here we are with Sentinels of the Multiverse the video game again and this time around I'm gonna play the heroes that I did not play last time. Um, I've already hidden uh, everybody that is not from the base game. So these are just the base game heroes. Last week I played with the Freedom Five. And so this week I will be playing with the other five heroes that are in the base game. That is three members of the Prime Wardens, which is Fnatic and Hakka and Tempest. And then two solo heroes. So we have Ra, the god of the sun, and the visionary. And we're going to have them fight Grand Warlord Voss, who is probably the second easiest-ish uh, villain in the base game and they will be battling in the ruins of Atlantis. So here we go with that. I'll let them do their little intro here. If you have um, Nemesis as the the villain and the hero in the first position they'll do a little dialogue with each other that's more specific to them. Okay, so uh, Voss's deal is that he is an alien invader and he's going to bring all his minions to invade Earth. Um, you can see before we get into his card text, he's got this uh, lightning bolt icon and that means that he is the nemesis to Tempest, so they're going to do bonus damage to each other. Um, and at the start of the game, he's going to put five minions into play. And then as we play, at the start of the, the villain turn, if he doesn't have any minions in play, he's going to flip to his other side. If there are ten or more minions in play, then he wins. Uh, he's successfully invaded the planet. And he takes less damage uh, by two for each uh, minion that is in, in play. So when there are no min minions, when I like get rid of his army and he flips, he goes to this side where he takes a little bit more damage. He's, he still t has damage reduction based on the number of minions that come into play, uh, but it's less. And he will do damage himself. Um, he'll hit the highest HP hero for some energy damage and the lowest HP hero for some fire damage. And then at the start of his turn, if there are two or minions, two or more minions in play that have come back in since he flipped, he flips back to his other side. So he may flip back and forth depending on how many minions he has out at any given time. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. So he's going to put out five different minions, most of which have an effect um, at the end of the villain turn. Um, typically they do a certain type of damage to the heroes and they're immune to the type of damage that they um, put out. So there's our five. Now he has his actual card play. I don't like that. Okay, so his first minion that's going to do something is this Frosthound. Uh, it's immune to cold damage and it's going to hit every hero 
for cold damage. So I'm just going to say choose for me as far as who's going to get hit. And he's doing bonus damage because of this uh, First Lieutenant Victor uh, character that's also in play, which means that I'm going to need to take Victor out quickly, as well as the minions. He's just zapped everybody. Now, this uh, gene bound ion lance lancer will do energy damage to whoever has the lowest HP. Uh, and I get to choose because I've got two the same. I'm going to say visionary. More of that bonus. Got projectile damage from that one and fire damage from that one. Okay. So this is Tempest. Uh, Tempest is kind of a mixture of Aquaman and Martian Manhunter and Storm from the X-Men, which is, sounds like a weird combination, but pretty cool character. Um, obviously, Tempest is an alien. And let's see what Tempest is going to do first. Let's do Lightning Slash. That's a one shot. And Tempest will do five lightning damage to one target. And we're going to say that that's going to go to First Lieutenant Victor. And as you can see, the damage is reduced. One of these minions down here, the Gene Bound Guard, reduces all damage to minions and Thorathians. Thorathians are the, the race that, uh, the alien race that um, Voss and his lieutenants are from. So we'll go ahead and do that. Cool. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is not actually going to do anything um, to anyone, but just for the sake of doing it, um, Tempest's inherent power is called Squall, and uh, it's a, a wind that does one point of projectile damage to every enemy target, uh, all non-hero targets, which is villains and environment targets. Because that genebound guard is reducing damage, I don't think this is going to actually do anything. But let's do it anyway, just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, he's got major damage reduction because he has so many minions out right now. Yeah, he's not actually going to hit anybody. I might have miscalculated. Maybe I should have taken out the guard first, but I'll get him. Um, okay, so I'm going to put Living Conflagration into play for Ra. Ra is um, the Egyptian god of the sun. He is basically equivalent to Thor. You know, he's, he's the, the mythic hero. And he is very much a blasty, blasty blaster. He's all about burning things up. So whenever this living conflagration uh, power or comes, comes into play or ongoing card comes into play, um, he gets to deal two fire damage to a given target. I'm going to use that. It gets reduced by the guard, but he'll still do one, which is enough to take out Victor. He's burninated. And now he gets to use a power. Um, he has a choice now. Um, this card that he just played is now out here, and he can use it to deal one fire damage and draw a card. One fire damage is not going to do me any good right now because of this gene bound guard, which I think is going to be my next target. So his inherent power is to deal one target two fire damage. So he uses Pyre. And that gets taken down to one, but that's a start getting rid of the guard, which will make all the other minions more vulnerable. Next up is Fnatic. Fnatic is kind of a cross between Wonder Woman and Zoriel from DC Comics. She's kind of got an angel theme, and she's basically a flying brick with 
some mystical uh, items. Let's see what we're going to do with her. All right, we're going to use Brutal Censure, which lets her do um, two radiant damage to a target and draw a card. Again, that gets, unfortunately, reduced by one. But we're kind of chipping away at the guard. She drew, draws a card. Now she can use her inherent power. Um, unfortunately, that means doing one melee damage and one radiant damage to a target. I'll go ahead and use it, but it's not going to do anything because of the damage reduction. So there's her zero points of melee and zero points of radiant. Next up is Haka. Haka's sort of uh, the Hulk equivalent in this setting. Um, ancient, immortal, New Zealander or Maori warrior. Um, his his tagline is the Savage Haka, but he's actually very well educated, as you would be if you were immortal and had been around for a long time. Um, because I've got a bunch of minions to chew through, I'm going to play his ongoing card, Punish the Weak, mostly because I don't have a lot of other great options right now. I want to save Ground Pound for later. Um, punish the weak means that when he damages a target with the target with the lowest HP, it does more damage, and any other target, his damage gets reduced. And it's interesting, the power for this card is to destroy this card, because this could be a liability later, so he's got a way to blow it up himself. His inherent power is Crush, which lets him do one target to melee damage. So he's going to crush this guard. So he gets plus one from Punish the Weak, minus one from the guard's damage resistance. So he still gets to do his two. And that's gone. Which will make getting rid of the rest of them easier. Now, Visionary. Um, Visionary is kind of a cross between Moon Dragon uh, from Marvel Comics. That's kind of an obvious visual influence, at least. And um, actually, the Rachel Gray version of Phoenix, because she has come back in time from a terrible alternate future to try to prevent that future from happening. And. Let me think of what the best thing to do for her is right now. I'm going to have her use Precognition, which is a one-shot that lets her look at the top three cards of the villain deck and put one on top and the other two on the bottom. And I am going to... Force Deployment is one that I never want to see, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. And I think I'm going to bring out gene bound bionaut to go on top. So the other two will go on the bottom. Uh, Visionary does lots of deck manipulation uh, type stuff. So now um, for as far as giving someone else the ability to draw cards, I'm going to give that I believe to Haka. So, so she will enlighten him he draws Savage Mana and Haka of Battle, and now he has to discard a card. And since he's got two copies of Savage Mana, I'll drop one. She does her draw, and we move on to the environment. The Ruins of Atlantis are kind of funky, um, kind of bad for everybody. Oh, the Kraken. Okay. And it's not actually the Kraken itself, it's just a tentacle, as you can see, it's called an appendage. Um, at the end of the environment turn, whoever the weakest target in play is, is going to get whacked um, by the Kraken. 
and it's a fairly tough tentacle. It takes 15 points of damage to get rid of it. We are going to aim that at the Frost Town because that actually hits everybody. The rest of these uh, only hit one target each. So goodbye, Frost Hound. That tentacle will be much less pleasant once all the minions are gone and my heroes are the ones with the weakest HP. So the minions are going after my folks, but at least they're not getting that damage bonus from Victor anymore. There's some toxic damage on Visionary. And we're back to Tempest. Hmm. I think we're going to put out Grievous Hailstorm, um, which gives him... It's kind of a, an upgraded version of his, his innate power. His innate power lets him do one projectile damage to all non-hero targets. This one lets him do two cold damage to all non-hero targets. So that's what I'm going to do. And it doesn't really matter what order we do this in. He gets a big damage resistance buff from his minions, but everybody else is going to get hit. And the Kraken. And Tempest draws a card. Ooh, lightning Slash again. That'll be useful. And we're over to Ra. I am going to use Summon Staff. It's a one-shot that lets him pull out the Staff of Ra from uh, the deck and also draw uh, the top card of his deck. And so, and then I get to play any one card and I will play the Staff that I just pulled out. That heals Ra a little bit and while it's in play uh, it increases his damage by one. As a power usage, uh, he can also blow up the staff and do more damage. Um, yeah, but I prefer to, to keep it in play, at least for right now. Now, all these minions are pretty weak right now, so I don't really need his two-point attack. So I'll do his one-point attack and draw a card out of it. Let's get rid of the Ion Lancer. Uh, he's gone. Ra gets to draw a card for using that power, and then he gets his end of turn draw. You may be noticing a theme with Ra's cards. Everything has fire on it. All right. Um, Actually, Fnatic can now get rid of all the rest of the minions, which I... Th well, it's going to send the Kraken after me, though. Eh, let's do it anyway. Live dangerously. Okay, Holy Nova is going to hit every non-hero target for one radiant damage and heal every hero for one point of damage, or um, for one point. Should have done that in a different order so I could actually hit um, Voss himself, but that's okay. That's just one point lost. Now because all of his minions are gone now, he's going to flip uh, at the beginning of his next turn. There's our healing. And now she can use her innate power. She exercise. Uh, I do want to get rid of the Kraken, but I think I want to go ahead and get started on Voss. So she'll hit him physically and then with a Radiant attack. Oh, there we go. So I should only have one more turn of the Kraken. And 
You know what, just for the heck of it, I am going to use Ground Pound. That makes me discard two cards, which I will do. And I will drop Haka of Restoration and Haka of Shielding. And now, until the beginning of Haka's next turn, uh, non-hero cards cannot deal damage. So Haka is going to use Crush. Um, if I go for Voss, he's going to do a little bit less damage because he still has Punish the Weak out, so I'll go for the Kraken and do some bonus damage instead. That's a good card to get. Okay, Visionary is out. And you know what? Because he because Voss does now have one, two, three, four, five, six minions um, in his trash, and I know somewhere in his deck he's got more copies of uh, Force Deployment, which brings all the minions out of his trash. I am gonna have Visionary use Brain Burn. She's gonna do seven points of damage to herself because that was how many uh, cards were in his trash, but now all the cards in his trash have been shuffled back into his deck. So I don't need to worry about those that first forced deployment coming up and bringing all those minions back out. And I'm going to use Enlighten again, and I'm going to use that on Haka again. He benefits from having a lot of cards in his hand. So, let's have him drop Haka of Shielding. Visionary does her draw. It's the environment's turn. Phosphorescent Chamber is going to uh, increase all damage, but right now non-heroes cannot do damage because of Ground Pound. And at the end of the environment turn, every player has to discard a card because of this, which, let's see, I've already got a Grievous Hailstorm in play, so I'll drop that. We will drop Excavation. We'll drop mm, Smite the Transgressor, I guess. Hawk of Battle and one of these decoy projections. Okay, it's Voss's turn. He flips, because he doesn't have any minions in play. He plays a card. There's another minion in play. And Voss cannot damage us because of the ground pound. And his minion can't either. So, haha, -ha, alien invaders. All right. Um, We'll have Tempest use Lightning Slash. Uh, he cannot use it, well he could, but it would do no good on the uh, Shock Infantry. And you may be able to tell, uh, the Shock Infantry are actually kind of mutated versions of Tempest's own alien race. So we will do it against Voss instead. Um, between the Nemesis bonus, the Phosphorescent Chamber bonus, we're overcoming the, the little bit of damage resistance that he has right now. That's six points of damage to him. And I'll use Grievous Hailstorm. And that'll hit all non-hero targets. And again, pretty decent bonuses there. He takes out the minion. And some more damage on the Kraken. And he draws another Hailstorm. Doesn't need that. Okay, next up is Ra. And let's do. He does have a couple powers in play now. So we'll do Flame Spike. That's a one shot that lets him do a little bit of fire damage to one target. 
He's got buffs both from the staff and from that environment card, the Phosphorescent Chamber. So he's going to do that against the Kraken. And now he can use an extra power this turn as a result of that, that Flame Spike one-shot that I just used. So he's going to start off by using Pyre, his innate power, to finish off the Kraken. Probably should have done this the other way. That's OK. And then Living Conflagration to do damage to Voss and then draw an extra card. And then his regular card draw. Lots of Fire Blasts. That's a good thing. More fire is always good. Okay, so now Fnatic is up. And I am going to actually get rid of that Phosphorescent Chamber. I'm going to play Consecrated Ground, which lets her blow up an ongoing or environment card. So that's gone. And then I can do Radiant Damage to up to three targets. I've only got one target in play right now. So I'll say stop dealing damage for the other two. And now she'll use her innate exorcism power to whack on Voss some more. OK, so that's it for ground pound. So now uh, non-hero targets will be able to do damage. And I'm going to put up Tayaha. That's his uh, big stick. And now that that's out, I'm going to use that power instead. He can deal up to two targets, three damage each. He's got that bonus from uh, Punish the Weak. Because Voss is, weirdly enough, the enemy target with the lowest HP right now and then stop dealing damage because there are no more enemies to hit. You can hit fellow heroes, and sometimes that's actually a useful thing to do, but it wouldn't have been right now. OK, um, because of that brain burn that she did, Visionary is getting a little low on HP, so I'm going to play Decoy Projection. Um, while this is in play, any damage that comes to Visionary instead goes to the projection. And it's only got five hit points, but that can still be you know, that's five hit points of, you know, basically damage buffer that uh, Visionary doesn't have to worry about. And then she's going to use Enlighten, and I think this time, in preparation for something upcoming, I'll give that to Fnatic. So she draws Undaunted and Brutal Censure. And then she has to discard something, and she'll discard one of these Undaunteds. Now back to the environment. There is a leaking room. This is not so great. So while this is in play, well, let's see what he does first. He plays a minion. That's going to do psychic damage to everybody. Voss himself is going to do energy and fire damage. The fire damage goes to the decoy, luckily. Now every hero target is going to take some psychic damage. This time I am going to do this um, at least a little bit or in order. So that's going to go to the projection instead of visionary, which destroys the projection already, unfortunately. And now I can say choose for me because the order doesn't really matter. It's going to zap everybody mentally. And now we're back to Tempest. So while this leaking room is in play, um, players can't play cards, and lightning damage is increased. And increased lightning damage is often a good thing for Tempest, but um, not right now since he can't play cards. But luckily, this card's going to be destroyed at the start of the environment turn. So we at least only have one round of not being able to play cards. So. He's got his cards down here, which I can't play. I'll just go ahead and use Grievous Hailstorm instead. Hit 
the minion, hit Voss, he gets his nemesis bonus. He draws a card. Now we're over to Ra. Again, Ra can't play cards, which is unfortunate because he's got a lot of good cards in play. And I guess we will finish taking out that Psy Weaver minion. He's burned up. Ra gets an extra card draw because of using that power. And then his normal card draw. He's got a really good hand right now. Fanatic can't play any cards, so she will just use her exorcism on Voss. Haka can't play any cards right now, so he's going to use his big stick, which does a little bit more damage than his innate crush power. He'll stop dealing damage. And now for Visionary. Again, Visionary can't play a card. She's going to give her extra draw to Fnatic again. And she will drop Divine Sacrifice. Okay, so now we're back to the environment. That leaking room is going to go away beginning of the environment turn and it plays hallway collapse Ugh. so it's going to hit everyone uh, for melee damage basically the, the hallway is crushing us the nice thing is that it hit boss as well not so nice thing is that uh, visionary is now getting pretty low on health and Voss is going to go after her on her turn, too. The hallway collapse only lasts for that one turn, so that's nice. Okay, so he's just played a device, and he's going to zap somebody. Uh, we'll have him zap Haka. He's got a little bit of healing somewhere in his deck. And he burns Visionary. All right, so this card that he just played um, means that the first time he plays a minion each turn, he gets to do an extra play from his, his deck. That's not so great, so we're going to want to get rid of that. So I think I'm going to have Tempest put out Electrical Storm. Um, that's an ongoing card. Basically, at the start of Tempest's turn, every turn, he's, he'll zap everybody for some lightning damage. And use Grievous Hailstorm. Which hits Voss and this Translocator device. I'm hoping that Tempest will draw his healing card. I say his. Tempest isn't, isn't actually gendered. Okay, this this should help. Um, so Ra is going to play Flesh of the Sun God. While this is in play, Ra is immune to fire damage, and as a power, he can make all the hero cards immune to fire damage until the start of his next turn. So that's actually what I'm going to do. Um, I hate to give up his blastiness, but that's going to protect Visionary, because she's the hero with the lowest HP, Voss is going to go after her with a fire attack, and so now she's immune to fire, so that's good. Okay, um, I'm going to have, since I've been collecting cards here for Fnatic, I'm going to have her play Divine Focus. So at the start of each turn, and that's not each each of her turns, that's each deck's turn, I can discard a card and she'll do radiant damage to the villain target with the highest HP. So that's why I gathered all these cards, because I'm going to be discarding them now. So we'll have her do her exorcism 
against the quark drive translocator, which I think is supposed to be kind of like a boom tube. We go to Haka's turn, and because it's the beginning of a turn, that Divine Focus lets Fanatic get rid of a card. So she will do what? And do some radiant damage to Voss. All right. I'm going to play Savage Mana. Um, while this card is in play, every time Haka destroys a card, I can put it underneath this card. Um, which is useful in a lot of ways. It keeps things out of the villain trash, for example, um, which is good when you've got a villain like Voss that can pull stuff out of his trash. And then, in addition, um, you can destroy all the cards underneath the card to do a bunch of toxic damage to one target. So it's generally good to try to build up a big stock of cards underneath that and then do one big blast. So he's going to use this Tayaha and hit the Translocator. Gets a Punish the Weak bonus for that. And then for his second hit, he'll hit Voss, but he gets a, a Malice um, because of Punish the Weak because Voss is no longer the non-hero target with the lowest HP. And next up is Visionary, and because it's, again, the beginning of a turn, I get to discard a card and do some damage to Voss. And she's going to play Cerebral Hemorrhage, which is a one-shot that deals up to three targets, two psychic damage each. That'll let me take out this Translocator before he gets another turn. And she can do damage to Voss. And she could do damage to someone else, but there's no one else. And she will use Enlighten to give Fanatic more cards to throw away. And we'll have her drop this one. back over to the environment's turn. And because it's the beginning of a turn, uh, Fanatic gets to discard something. She'll drop Undaunted. So that Divine Focus is a, a good source of damage. Ugh, okay. So this Mystical Defenses card that the environment just played is going to zap every non-environment target um, at the end of each environment turn. So that's another one we're going to want to get rid of. Even though it's hitting the villain too, it's hitting us, which is not good. Zap, zap, zap. She's very low. Fanatic gets to drop a card and do some damage. Okay, so there's that Force Deployment card that I had talked about. He zaps Fnatic, and he's going to try to zap Visionary, but the Flesh of the Sun God means that he doesn't actually do that damage. Okay, so at the start of Tempest's turn, this Electrical Storm hits everybody. Gets his Nemesis bonus against Voss. Hits the Mystical Defenses as well. And it's still the start of Tempest's turn, and Fnatic gets to do her thing. I'm going to have her... I've been hanging on to this, but I, things are going well, so we're going to drop End of Days. And... Let's have Tempest use Flash Flood to get rid of... Uh, mystical defenses. I could get rid of up to two environment cards, but there's only one in play right now. But at least it's not going to be zapping us next turn. And then Grievous Hailstorm. So the way this uh, Force Deployment card that Voss has out works, um, at the beginning of his next turn, it'll destroy itself. Oh, here's Fanatic. 
ahead and drop that. That may be a mistake, but we'll see. So yeah, at the beginning of his next turn, um, it destroys itself, and when it is destroyed, all the minions from the villain trash get put into play. Right now, he's only got two, so that's not so bad. We will... I'm going to do the Flesh of the Sun God again um, to keep protecting Visionary, so in order to get a little damage in, I'm going to do Fire Blast. Actually, a fair amount of damage. And heroes are now immune to fire. And we're back to Fnatic. And I'm going to choose, I, I want to keep both of these, I think. So I'm going to choose to not discard a card. And I'm not going to have Fnatic deal herself some fire damage, which means that... Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. Worked out that way because she's immune to fire damage. So Divine Focus is gone, so no more discarding every turn. But I did a fair amount of damage with it. So Holy Nova, that's what I want to do. Do a little bit more damage to Voss, but more importantly, restore some health to the heroes, which certainly Visionary needed. And she will use Exorcism. Now over to Haka. And he's going to use Elbow Smash, which is just a one-shot that does some damage. I love the artwork on that card. So there's one whack. And then he'll use his big stick to whack again. And that's his turn. And for Visionary, I'm going to have her do Precognition again, um, because that's pretty useful. She'll see the top three cards on his deck. Mm. I'm going to say the Shock Infantry, and I'll put the Force Deployment back on the bottom. Gonna enlighten. Let's give the card draw to Tempest. See if we can get his heal out. Nope. All right, we'll get rid of the hailstorm because I've already got one in play. All right. Hopefully the environment's not going to be too nasty. Toxic seaweed. That's awesome. Okay, so while this is in play, every time a hero uses a power, they take toxic damage, and that sucks. Um, so because it's the end of the environment turn, one player can discard their whole hand to destroy this card. So I'm going to take a look at the hands. So he's got some useful stuff. He's got a lot of stuff. I want to keep at least one of those cards. You know what? I'm going to have Visionary discard her hand. Meanwhile... Okay, so Visionary discards her hand. The seaweed goes away. Nobody's going to take that damage. Force Deployment blows itself up and brings out those two minions. Another copy of the Shock Infantry. Energy damage to Ra. He'll try to do fire damage to Visionary. This one does psychic damage to everybody, which is going to take Visionary very close to being defeated. That 
some zappy damage. And back to us. So he's going to hit everything with lightning damage. Um, unfortunately, because of the number of minions out, that's not going to hit boss very hard. And these guys are immune to lightning. I say guys, but they're genderless too, because they're they're from Tempest's species. All right, so chain lightning would be very good if they weren't immune to lightning. So you know, what? I'm going to do aquatic correspondence. Uh, Tempest is going to talk to some fish, Aquaman style, and draw some cards. Still no healing power. And then he'll batter everybody with hail. And this time, we'll start with that one. And now it doesn't really matter, so. A little tiny bit of damage to Voss. Okay. Ra is up, and this time he's going to use Flame Spike, which will do a little bit of fire damage, but more importantly, let him use two powers this turn. So power number one is going to be Flesh of the Sun God for that nice fire immunity that's keeping Visionary alive. And power number two will be Living Conflagration, which I will use to take out this minion and get an extra card draw. So now we're back to Fanatic. And neither of these cards are super useful right now, so I will skip her play phase. Just go right to the exorcism. Unless he surprises me with pulling out a battleship, which he does have two spaceships in his deck, um, things are looking pretty good for this game. Alright, I'm going to give Haka some bonus damage here. So he's going to play Haka of Battle. All of his cards that have Haka in the title involve discarding a bunch of cards in order to get some sort of benefit. So with this one, he gets to draw, I think, two cards? Is it one card, two cards? Yeah, he draws two cards. And then he can discard as many cards as he wants. So we're going to get rid of one, two, three four, five, and the next damage he does is going to be increased by five. So between that um, and the Punish the Weak bonus, that's nine damage. And he doesn't have anybody else to hit. Visionary has no cards in hand, so she can't play a card, but she can use her power, which she'll use on herself. Oh, now she gets Twist the Aether. All right, so she will drop this one. Twist the Aether is one of her best cards, and probably in future games we'll see her play that. Um, Boss has only got three hit points left, so this game is not going to last long. And another leaking room, so players can't play cards. That's okay. We're set up pretty well to win on this next turn. Oh, <laughs> there's a spaceship. I think it's too little too late for Voss, though. 
He is... Oh no, okay, great. So um, this particular spaceship does fire damage to all heroes, but all my heroes are immune to fire damage due to Ra's Flesh of the Sun God. So, haha, -ha, spaceship. I will actually get through this with Visionary Alive, I believe. All right. So the electrical storm is going to hit both Voss. Oh, and because of the bonus lightning damage from the leaking room, that was enough to take him out. So we have successfully stopped the alien invasion of Earth. Most of my team came out okay. Visionary was hanging on kind of by a thread there at the end, but close only counts in what horseshoes and hand grenades right so that was this week's game um, I might play again this week or I might wait till next week um, next time it'll probably be another uh, base game villain and base game environment uh, maybe I'll do like Omnitron um, in the Mars base or something like that. We'll see. Um, and then I'm not sure what heroes, because I've used all 10 heroes from the base game, but I don't want to get into the expansions quite yet. So I'll just, I'll mix it up and use a different uh, mix of heroes than I've used before. So that's that. Hopefully this, this was entertaining on some level uh, or educational if you're, if you're learning the game. And uh, feel free to send me requests, like on G+. I think I don't think I have anybody watching who's not a G+ uh, person. And um, yeah, feel free to request specific teams or villains, or if you want, you know, strategy on on beating a particular enemy or getting a particular achievement. Um, I've got all the achievements at this point, so. I think I can probably help with that. But yeah, that's it. Thanks very much for watching, and hopefully you'll watch next time. Bye.